Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So today, we're going to do a controller review, and today we're going to be reviewing the Hori Pad. Now, I actually waited a couple of months before reviewing the Hori Pad, because uh, this controller, I'm going to throw a spoiler out right away, really, really disappointed me. And I waited a couple of months because I wanted to be past that point where you're sort of really disappointed in a product, and that I'm able to review it in a fair way. And just so that we're clear, because unfortunately this is gonna be a sort of negative-ish review, uh, I wanna put it out there that this is an attack against Hori in general, because I think a lot of Hori products are actually really quality products. A lot of Hori products I actually love. The, the, the Hori Multiport is one of my favorite overall accessories available for the Switch family out there right now. So Hori in general do put out decent products. However, the Hori pad that we're gonna review today, in my opinion, is not one of those products. And I thought it was important to throw it out there for all of you, so that if anyone's looking at buying a cheap wired controller, that depending on your needs, you might wanna steer away from the Hori pad. But overall, let's get to looking at the controller in depth and you guys are going to start understanding why, in my opinion, there are way better choices than the Hori Pad out there. By the way, just a quick shout out. I really want to thank everyone for liking and subscribing to my channel in the last few months. I've been growing quicker than usual, and it's really, really uh, incredible for me to have that feeling that, you know, you guys are liking what I'm doing. So, you know, just to keep it going, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I come out with a new video. Okay, so first let's take a look at the box and you'll see that my main problem with this controller actually starts with the way they're trying to sell it to you. So, you know, the front side of the box, pretty standard. You just get a few views of the controller, nothing special there. Then we get to the back. And they're trying to sell you that the main special function of this controller is that your D-pad is removable to give you access to four buttons like the standard Joy-Con. And that's where my problem begins, because they're trying to sell you this as a positive feature, an additional feature in their design. Let's just nonetheless take a quick overview of the controller before I get to my specific problem with it. So overall, the controller Although I didn't like some of the features, I've got to say that it, 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 it feels pretty good in hand. Like it's, it basically, it's reminiscent of an Xbox 360 controller. However, it's a little fatter at the bottom and a little bit lighter overall. But nonetheless, the overall design of the controller is pretty decent. These thumbsticks are good, responsive, not too tight, not too loose. The buttons are nice clicky not mushy at all. Same thing for the L and R triggers. And this controller offers you a turbo functionality on any of the face buttons. So you, if you turbo is important for you, this controller is offering it. And what, like Hori demonstrated, the main design point that they're trying to sell you with this controller is that you can remove the D-pad, okay? You can pop it on the back here so that you don't lose it. And you can use the uh, front of the controller with four separate face buttons instead of a D-pad, okay? And this is where most of my problems are coming to, but we're gonna look at that in a few moments. I just wanted to finish with an overview. Uh, also to note, the cord is not detachable on this, which is unfortunately a downside. And they don't offer you a connected strap to keep the uh, cable in check. So you will need to use an elastic band or something if you want to store the controller comfortably, or if you want to carry it around for travel reasons, uh, it's going to uh, require that. Other than that, it's a standard USB connection. And I mean, like I said, overall, the feel of the controller isn't bad. The major problem I have is really with that D-pad, which we're gonna get to in a second. And actually, just before we get to talking about that D-pad, one last thing, I just wanted to show you how the turbo functionality works, because overall, using the turbo functionality is pretty easy. So basically, you basically hold down the turbo button, you press whatever button you want the turbo to be active on at the same time. At that point, you can just hold the button down and the inputs will come automatically. You also have a turbo lock fu function. So if you hold the turbo button and you hit the same button again, 
the button will stay locked in turbo, it, continuing to input until you basically hit the turbo and button again, which turns it off. And it's as simple as that. You can actually have more than one button on turbo at the same time. So you could activate the turbo on Y, activate the turbo on X. You have both Y and X functioning in turbo. And if you want to cancel all the turbo functionality at once, you hold down turbo and minus, that'll remove the turbo functionality from the whole controller. And there you have the basic turbo functionality for the Hori pad. Just so I can illustrate where I'm coming from, this is the left side Joy-Con. This is normally, uh, basically if you have your switch, it's your switch would be here and this is the left side Joy-Con. So this is normally where a D-pad would be situated and that on the switch, they decided to put these four separate buttons. And for a lot of people, if you don't know, the reason why Nintendo didn't put a D-pad on there is because originally they sold the switch as being able to detach a Joy-Con, hand it to your friend, and your friend has access to a full controller putting it this way. Meaning that if you had a D-pad here, he wouldn't really have the same sensation as you would with the other side of the controller, because rather than having four separate buttons, he would be stuck with a D-pad, making it less intuitive to use the Y, X, B and A buttons. Now, this wasn't a choice of design where Nintendo thought this was better than a D-pad. It was a necessity because of the way they were trying to sell the Switch. So now over to the Hori Pad. Basically, what their great design is, is that they reproduced the Joy-Con buttons here. However, this is totally unnecessary. No one actually would normally choose to play with four separate buttons like this when you have access to a normally functioning D-Pad because no one's going to be handing this controller to a friend and be playing with one half to have four buttons here. Like, it's totally, totally pointless. And this D-pad here that you can sort of pop on over top is actually really bad. It, it really does not feel good at all. And doing any type of circular motion like a Street Fighter Hadouken is almost impossible with this controller. Like, we're not talking about missing it 50% of the time. Like, I actually have to concentrate and I managed to pop out a Hadouken like one times out of five if I really concentrate and focus on getting that diagonal registered. Like the D-pad is just awful in this sense. If you're looking at going in any specific direction, it's fine. But as soon as you have to do a rotary motion or if you need a specific diagonal, you better be sh make darn sure to put a lot of pressure on that diagonal or you'll have one of the two buttons not register. It is a awful design for the D-pad. Okay, so I know I said I would try to do this with as little emotion as possible, and I think it's bleeding through though a little bit that I really, you know, am disappointed in this controller. And, you know, I think what disappoints me the most is that this controller was made by Hori. Because normally Hori is a company that makes fighting game products like they make a lot of controllers for dedicated towards fighting games and this controller is one of the worst i've ever ever used for a fighting game like like a street fighter or dragon ball z fighters this is one of the worst controllers i actually had to remove the d-pad and use the face button separately to be able to even perform basic moves in those games which is really disappointing when normally this comes from a company that is known for making products that are really good for fighting games. But not only that, it's that basically it's one of the officially Nintendo branded recognized third party controllers. If this was a no name AliExpress controller and that this it would have failed this hard on one of its basic functions, I probably wouldn't have as much problem with it because it's from a no name brand and there won't be many people buying it expecting top quality or you know at least pretty decent quality but at the same time coming from hori it's just really disappointing and uh, you know i just hope that in future designs they really think about this and change it and theoretically even hori themselves know that it's probably not the best design the reason why is if you look at their more expensive wireless hori pad they don't reproduce this design in it. They're using a normal D-pad in it. If this was such an awesome revolutionary design, wouldn't you put it on your higher end controller as well? Most likely in my opinion. So probably they know 
that this was a mistake but they have to sort of you know monetize the molds and the production of this controller so they have to continue selling it till basically they come up with a different design but overall let's get to the scoring i think i've talked enough about the downsides of this controller let's nonetheless go through the average scoring that i do for all my controllers and you know i'll try and give it the fairest evaluation i can but you know spoilers it's probably not going to come out too positive now first Overall feel and build quality. Well, look, I'm gonna give this controller a fair score. I'm gonna be giving it a three out of five because overall the feel and the build quality isn't bad on the controller. It fits well in hand. Like I said, it, it reminiscent a lot of an Xbox 360 controller, just a little fatter at the bottom. Uh, and overall the build quality isn't bad. Like if you look at everything except that D-pad, the build quality is what you expect from Hori. It feels decent. It's a little light in my opinion, which is why it's not getting a higher score, but it's not a bad feel or build quality either. Now, if we move on to the features of this controller, and this section is going to hurt a lot. Uh, this controller is going to be getting a 2 out of 10. Well, basically, it has no special functionality, so it has no rumble, has no motion control, it's a wired controller, it doesn't recognize NFC, okay? However, the two points where it comes from, well, like I said, I only dock one point when it's a wired controller. So it does get like a free point being a wired controller because I don't count the lack of batteries. And basically it gets an extra point for the turbo functionality because it is an extra function. The turbo functionality functions well, it's easy to use. However, all the other special features about this controller, <coughs> the D-pad, is just not going to count for anything in my opinion, which is why this controller winds up with a 2 out of 10. Okay, let's start with our first gaming category, which will be 3D action games and FPS games. Now in this category, the controller actually does pretty well. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Why? Because basically everything's there that you need for a 3D action or FPS game, because it doesn't rely often uh, hardly at all on the D-pad. And basically, everything else about the controller feels good. The buttons are responsive, the joysticks work well, the shoulder buttons have a nice, quick, rapid click. So for if you need to fire off single shots, it works well on the Hori pad. So for a 3D action FPS game, you can get around with this controller and having that extra turbo functionality can help you out in some games, although not all games. Now, however, if we move on to our second gaming category, which is 2D side-scrollers or traditional platforming games, well, unfortunately, this controller is going to be getting a 4 out of 10. Why? Because of that D-pad. It, it works really, really bad if you need any type of diagonal input. Basically, if, you're go if you have a game that you only need right, left, up, or down as single inputs, you'll be okay. But as soon as you need to hit diagonals, this D-pad is trash. It, it just doesn't work well for diagonals at all. And you'll wind up probably removing the D-pad cap. And at that point, just use the Nintendo Dog Face controller. You'll ha be having approximately the same experience in those type of games. And you won't be losing the rumble, the wireless, and the, uh, you know, the motion controls. But with this, with this controller, you would be losing those functions and be trading it for a less than stellar D-pad. Now, if we get to our third category, which is traditional 2D fighters. So we're talking about our Street Fighters, our Dragon Ball Fighter Zs, and those type of games. Well, this is going to be, unsuspectingly, the worst category for this controller. And it's going to be getting a 2 out of 10. Basically... These games are almost impossible to play with the Hori pad unless you remove the D-pad. And at that point, you are way better off with the Nintendo Dog Face controller than with this controller. Because on top of the buttons being not very functional, they're not placed as well in this controller. Like feel-wise, your thumb is going to be stretched out more hitting these four buttons than they would be on the traditional Dog Face controller. And I can tell you... Personally, if I had to choose between using the standard dog face controller that comes free with your Switch or the Hori pad for a fighting game, I will choose the dog face controller like 10 times out of 10. 
I will not play a fighting game with the Hori Pad. I actually got really frustrated and quit an online game tr because I was playing with this and couldn't perform even the simplest of moves. And we're going to finish with a better category for this controller. If we're talking about racing games, well, it's going to be getting a 7 out of 10. Why 7 out of 10? Well, basically, once again, these games generally do not need the D-pad or will have only basic functions with the D-pad, so not being able to put those diagonal inputs won't be a huge downside for this controller. But at the same time, losing the motion control, the vibration, and basically the wirelessness of this controller, you're just better off with the dog face controller overall is where I'm trying to get at for these games. So it'll be getting a seven out of 10 because you can play these games, it'll be decent, it'll be okay, but it will not be a better experience than what you'd get out of the dog face controller, even probably a little bit less, because like I said, you're losing out on all the rumble and the motion controls. So overall, that gives the Hori Pad a score of 26 out of 55. Unfortunately, making it the lowest scoring controller that we've tested so far on the channel. And overall, it's, it's not surprising. The reason why is because basically, if I had a choice in most occasions, I would just use this rather than this. If all you do is play FPS, 3D action games, racing games and you play little to no platformers at all or fighting or 2d fighting games or just fighting games that require quarter or half circle motions then yes you can get away with just a hori pad but for every other overall gaming need i would just say stick with a dog face controller why waste even if it's only 20 bucks why waste 20 bucks on this when this is better overall that's basically where i'm at in the current situation and why I think I have such a problem with the Hori Pad. It's that basically overall in a lot of gaming situations, I would have just preferred using the standard dog face controller that comes with your Nintendo Switch. Now, enough with the doom and gloom. We're done with this review. I think I've, you know, explained to you guys my points on the Hori Pad. Now do remember that if you disagree with any of this, this is my opinion and I'm totally open. If anyone really likes the Hori Pad and you bought it and you're happy with it, power to you. I'm, I'm really glad. I'm just talking to you from a personal perspective because a lot of the games I play or just I play a lot of every type of game, I find the Hori Pad has some decent strengths but some really harsh weaknesses. And because it's such a disparity between the two, that's, I think, where I'm having a problem with this controller. And especially because, you know, and if you check my channel out or just the wall behind me, there's so many better controllers out there for about the same price that I'm really just disappointed with Hori put on the table. And like I said, especially considering that their wireless controller has gone back to a traditional D-pad, I think in a certain sense, even they know that that D-pad wasn't maybe the best idea in the world. So I am going to leave affiliate links down below, but like I said, I'm just doing it because some people really like to see the products that I show on the channel. I'm leaving the affiliate links down below. If you do decide to buy the controller, just please be aware of everything I've talked about in this review before choosing to buy it. Um, at the same time, I really want to thank everyone out there for supporting the channel. Keep watching my videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And activate the notification bell also if you haven't so that you're aware when I pop up a new video. And as usual, I hope overall, even though this has been a negative video, you've liked uh, hearing me talk about the Hori Pad today. And maybe I saved some money for some of you out there that were looking at possibly purchasing this controller. And I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.